Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on complete search using bitmasks. In this problem, I'll be going over my solution for the problem named Peter and a combination lock. And I'll be explaining how we can use brute force using bitmasks to solve this problem after I explain the technique. So in this problem, we are basically given Peter who has bought a new car and he discovered that the petrol tank is secured with a combination lock which has a scale of 360 degrees and a pointer which initially points to zero as you can see in this figure now peter instructed the car dealer to rotate the locks wheel exactly n times the ith rotation will rotate the lock by ai degrees so for example if the first rotation was 20 degrees then the lock would move to the point 20 then if the next rotation was 60 degrees it would move to a total of 0.80 degrees and what we need to ensure is that after all n rotations the lock comes back to the position of zero so the pointer will point to position zero again now it isn't as simple as just rotating by ai degrees because there are two possible ways in which you can rotate you can either rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise so this means that if you are given 20 and 40, you can either rotate 20 and then 40 to get 60 or you can rotate 20 and minus 40 to go to 340 or you can rotate minus 20 and then plus 40 to go back to 20 or you can rotate minus 40 and then plus 20 to go to 340. So there are a number of possible ways and we need to find out in which combination of ways will we get the result to be zero so we need to print yes whether there is a possible combination of rotations of uh, orientation such that the sum of all the orientations will give you the final angle as zero so let's look at a few examples in order to better understand the problem so in the first example we can rotate by plus 10 degrees then by plus 20 degrees and then after we do two clockwise rotations of plus 10 and then plus 20, we can rotate it back 30 degrees to get a total sum of zero degrees, which is uh, which is again at the original position. And hence we will print yes. In the next example, we can't go back to zero degrees after performing some uh, operations of clockwise and counterclockwise rotations because you can try any possible combination of clockwise and counterclockwise and you will see that you never get zero degrees so we will print no and in the next example uh, again we will basically just do all three clockwise rotations so we do 120 plus 120 plus 120 so we get 360 degrees which is the same as zero degrees so that's why we will print yes we have found one possible rotations uh, one possible orientation such that uh, the pointer goes back to zero degrees now in general the key idea for the brute force is that there are two possible orientations for each of the uh, for each of the n operations so each of the n operations can be done either clockwise or anti-clockwise let's take clockwise as positive and anti-clockwise as negative this means that if we add up all the clockwise and subtract all the anti-clockwise angles then the final result should be a multiple of 360 so it should be either zero or like as we saw in this example it was 360 degrees in this example it was zero in another in another example it could be 720 or 1080 or 1440 or any multiple of 360 degrees that's why what we essentially need to do is we need to try all possible combinations and in a particular combination we need to add up all the clockwise subtract all the counterclockwise and if that is a multiple of 360 degrees we will print yes otherwise after all possible combinations we don't if we don't get a solution we'll print no so now i'll be explaining exactly how we can check all possible combinations because in checking all the possible combinations we will be using the technique of complete search using bit masks so the reason why we use bit masks is because notice that each particular rotation the ith rotation has two possibilities so let's label i going from 1 to n so the first angle 
there are two possibilities. It can be either plus AI or minus AI, where plus AI denotes the clockwise rotation and minus AI denotes the counterclockwise rotation. So there are two possibilities for each of the n angles. So these are the indices of the angles and these are the number of possibilities. And we know that for each angle, we have two possibilities, which is why the total number of possibilities is going to be 2 raised to n. And if you consider the number 2 raised to n in binary representation, then that's just 1 followed by n zeros. And if you consider, so let's let's actually re rename the angles from 0 to n minus 1 because whenever you use bit masks, it's always better to use um, zero base indexing. So let's consider these angles and let's see that this is the bitwise representation of the number 2 raised to n. So this is the bitwise representation. Now we know that each of the bits, so let's consider the bits in this number 2 raised to n and the, the bits are numbered from right to left because uh, we, we, when we consider the number 0, when we consider, for example, let's consider the number 1, 1 or let's consider the number 1, 1, 0, then in this case, the exponents are numbered, the indices are numbered 0, 1, 2 and this is going to be equal to 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 1 which is 6 in base 2. So, uh, so that's why we number the, the powers or the indices from right to left when we are working with bit masks or base 2 numbers. So, let that, so, so for that reason, let's label all the indices from 0 till n minus 1 from right to left and let's label it in a similar manner over here. Now, the key idea is that this number which is 2 raised to n is written in this manner in base 2 and we know that all these remaining bits are zeros in 2 raised to n and we know that for numbers 2 raised to n minus 1 so 2 raised to n minus 1 will be will be this number it will contain the nth bit as 0 and the n minus 1 10 minus 2 10 minus 3 all the way up till the first and the zeroth bits will all be ones and we know that 2 raised to n minus 2 will be 0 1 1 1 all the way up till 1 and then a 0 over here and we know that 2 raised to n minus 3 will be something like this and the key idea is that when we consider these numbers from from all the way up till so let's go till the number uh, 4 for example so 4 will contain all these zeros and then in the end you get something like 100 0, 0. and if you consider the number 3 then you get the last two bits as 1 1 and if you consider the number 2 then all these are zeros all these are zeros and then the last two bits are 1 0 and similarly for 1 the last two bits are 0 and 1 and for 0 all the bits are zeros so this is the bitwise representation of all the numbers from 0 till 2 raised to n. Now you should notice a pattern when I have written down all the bitwise representations over here. You should notice a pattern between the angles, between the orientation of the angles and these bitwise numbers. So let me explain what exactly is happening uh, and what the pattern is because uh, the motivation behind brute force using bit masks is that these two concepts of checking all possible combinations of bit masks from 0 till 2 raised to n and checking all possible orientations of angles, these two are actually related and we'll be using these two, uh, we'll be basically drawing a mapping from, from the numbers 0 till, till 2 raised to n. We'll be doing a mapping between that and all possible combinations. So now I'll be explaining exactly how we can use these numbers from 0 till 2 raised to n. Let's consider 0 to represent the fact that 
the angle is positive or it's clockwise and one to represent that the angle is negative or anti-clockwise. Now you should notice that for all the numbers from 0 till 2 raised to n minus 1, let's consider any random index. So let's consider a random number mask which is between 0 and 2 raised to n minus 1. So mask belongs to this range 0 till 2 raised to n minus 1 and let's consider the bits in this mask. So that's how the name bit mask comes. We'll consider all the bits in this mask and let's we know that the bits are only from from 0 till n minus 1. So this is 0 1 all the way up till n n minus 1 n minus 2 and n minus 3. So you can ignore the nth position. We only are considered with 0 till n minus 1 because those are the indices of the original array as well. So we know that we will use this. We, we can figure out the bits of this mask by by just we can figure out which bits are set in this mask in the following manner if mask and one left shifted i so if mask and one left shifted i is true so if this is if this is if this number corresponds to the number zero if this is zero then we know that the ith bit is not set and hence the it, it will represent a zero so ith bit is a zero ith bit is a 0. Otherwise, the ith bit is a 1. Otherwise, ith bit is a 1. And using this statement, we can figure out that uh, which position should be a positive angle and which position should be a negative angle. And what we essentially need to do is, for each i, going from 0 till n minus 1, so 0 till n minus 1, we will check whether the ith bit is set. We go till 0 till n minus 1 because like uh, you can see that there are the indices are from 0 till n minus 1 and the nth position will always be a 0. So consider only the number the indices from 0 till n minus 1 and check in the current mask if the ith bit is set. If the ith bit is set then the ith bit is 1 and we consider the angle to be negative otherwise we consider the angle to be positive. It doesn't matter what you call positive and what you call negative. Uh, the only thing is mat that matters is that one is positive and the other is negative. So you could have so you could have called zero negative and one positive as well. Uh, either ways, uh, either ways the the idea remains the same that you will be adding all the positive angles and subtracting all the negative angles. So what you will be doing uh, after like uh, after iterating through all the bits and figuring out which are set is when the zero, when the ith bit is a zero, so we are considering. So in this case, we are considering zero to be ne negative. Uh, let's take that example. So if zero is negative, the ith bit is a zero, and hence we'll consider the total angle. So the total angle will increase by uh, will decrease by e of i because the ith bit is a zero. So it will decrease by e of i. Otherwise, the total angle will increase by e of i and in the end, we just need to check whether the total angle is a multiple of 360 degrees. Then if that is the case, we'll print yes, print yes and we'll break. Otherwise, we'll just continue with the next possible value of mask and mask goes from 0 to 2 raised to n minus 1. That's why there will be an outer loop which runs from 0 till 2 raised to n minus 1. Within that outer loop, there is this loop for i. And for each i, we check whether the ith bit is set. The ith bit will be set if this condition is met. So this is a small bit mask condition, which you should remember, which is, uh, so if the mask, if you take the and of mask and the number, which is a left shifted uh, i times, so the number one left shifted i times, if you take the and of those two, if that turns out to be 0, then the ith bit is 0 and we will decrease the total value by total angle by e of i. Otherwise, we will increase the total angle by e of i. And in the end, if the total angle is a multiple of 360 degrees, then we know that we are su successfully uh, done. So these are counterclockwise rotations. So we have successfully added the counterclockwise 
and clockwise rotations in order to get back the pointer to the original position which is 0 degrees uh, or a multiple of 360 degrees and that's why um, this this pseudo code which does which checks for all possible mask values from 0 to 2 raised to n minus 1 and for each mask value it takes o of n time to check whether that mask value is correct so this uh, this is the entire idea behind brute force using bit masks and you can see the bijection or the mapping between the 2 raised to n possibilities and the 2 raised to n possible values of mask and now i'll just show you the code which implements the exact same pseudo code so in the code i will use a vector to represent all the angles and for each mask going from 0 to 2 raised to n minus 1 i will initialize the sum of the total angle to be 0 if the total angle uh, after you so if mask and one left shift rely this means that the ith bit is 1 this means that it's a clockwise clockwise rotation otherwise it's a anti clockwise rotation and you can add up the clockwise and subtract the anti clockwise or you can do the other way around as well it doesn't really matter because uh, we know that in the end the sum should be zero so obviously it doesn't matter whether you like do plus one and minus one or minus one and plus one they'll both add up to zero or they'll both be a multiple of 360 degrees and in that case whenever we get a multiple of 360 degrees we will just print yes and we will break uh, and after all possibilities if we haven't found a successful orientation of angles we print no and this is the entire logic behind brute force using bit masks so this is only 15 lines of code and i hope you understood exactly how and exactly why the brute force works and why there's a mapping between all the bit masks and all the two raised to n possibilities for orientation of angles so if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you